So what's up, everybody? And welcome to the Sean Lowry Show. And I have an amazing guest today. I'm so excited. He is Dr. Mike Hart, and he's a medical cannabis doctor and an Amazon best-selling author. He operates a clinic, and I'm so excited to have him here on the show. So Mike, Dr. Mike Hart, welcome to the show. Well, thanks so much for having me, brother. Hopefully I can live up to those uh, lofty uh, expectations in that yeah. introduction, but we'll do yeah. my best, that's for sure. Yeah, I have no doubt that you can. So yeah, I'm so excited and I have a lot I want to cover with you. I want to uh, talk about uh, medical marijuana, of course, your business, mental and physical health, uh, the coronavirus, stoicism, a lot of topics to cover. We'll see where it goes. Sure. But uh, yeah, the first thing I kind of wanted to ask you about was, I think a year ago, right around a year ago, you were on the Joe Rogan show, the biggest podcast oh. in the world. And I'm a huge oh. fan. So yeah. I think, I just think that's so cool. I've, I watched the episode at the time it came out, of course, and I watched it again. And uh, so I kind of well, wanted, wanted to ask you like uh, about the behind the scenes a little bit of it. Like how sure. did you, how did you go about getting on that? Did, did, you, did he like DM you or how did that happen? Yeah. So, uh, you know, luckily like Rogan's been following me since 2014. Wow. Uh, you know, we, you know, so it's been a bit of a long history there. So, you know, I think that, uh, you know, we just have a lot of similar interests. Yeah. So, you know, obviously, you know, cannabis is a big yeah. interest of mine, uh, but MMA is also a huge interest of mine. Okay. So working out, uh, um, you know, so it's eating healthy, so it's nutrition, like high performance. Right. Um, you know, he talks a lot about, you know, mindset, positivity, surrounding yourself with like good people, things like that. So, I think we have just like a lot of different things that we have in common. Okay. So, you know, so, so uh, he followed you on, on like social media or Instagram, like yeah, 2000, yeah. 2014, you said. 2014. Yeah. He started following me then. Tim Ferriss actually started following me about a year that's before. Awesome. That's awesome. So that's so how cool. I, I knew a couple of those guys. But yeah. So, um, you know, he, he's been retweeting me for like five or six wow. years. Right? Um, and if you look at my Twitter account, actually, there's one from 2014 is my pins, is my pins. <laughs> That might have been the first time that he, he retweeted me. That um, is great company. But anyways, that's kind of how it happened. And then uh, really, I mean, in many ways, I'm kind of lucky that Alex wrote that book, you know, because uh, you know, a couple of people approached Joe and said, hey, this has got Alex and stuff about pot. Uh, and he wanted an expert to debate him. So, you know, just based upon, you know, the little bit of history that we had together, you know, he, he did DM me, reached out to me on Twitter. DM'd you? Uh, yeah, he DM'd me and, and said, you know, do you want to come on, come on the podcast? That's so cool. Um, were you were, yeah. were you so excited when you got when you got the DM? <laughs> yeah, I couldn't believe it when I when I kind of opened up. <laughs> my phone. So, yeah, it wasn't the the first time he's uh, DM'd me, um, like without me reaching out to him. But uh, yeah, I'll save that maybe DM for. <laughs> another but you did. But you didn't. You didn't ask to be on the podcast, did you? No, I did not be on the podcast. Because I'm, I'm, a, I'm a big listener, and it seems like he, he, like, you can't. There's no like rules. Like he just picks his guests. He's, he's, uh, just like on a whim. There's like, no strategy to get there's no it on. Strat- exactly. There's no strategy. Yeah. Like so. he, he's just in one day. If he's just like, yeah, I want to listen to this dude talk. That's awesome. Uh, and he'll call you or her DMs. That's awesome. or whatever. And and what about the uh, just the experience? Like, is it as cool? Like the you went to the studio and like. Did you guys like hang out before or after? Was it just like, was it kind of just like this? Like you just say hi before you do the podcast and you're out. Yeah. So we got to, you know, hang out a little before, you know, not too, too much. He showed me around uh, his area. So the, um, you know, his studio. So he's got like a state of the art gym there. Uh, right. He's got the sauna in there. Uh, he's got this machine in there actually too, where, um, you know, you've probably seen a bunch of machines before where it tests your, your punching power. Yeah. He's got one in there that, that tests uh, your kicking power. Oh. So that's, that's kind of cool. Um, you know, he's got everything. People, that, people that say it's like the ultimate man cave. And I, I don't know if I've ever even seen, like, it's not easy to access, like, but you've seen it. And it's, it's as cool yeah. as people say. Yeah. I mean, I, I, uh, I threw up a pup, you know, a few pictures and stuff on my Instagram. I think it's still on my, okay. My I could there. probably look harder, um, but that's button. awesome. And All three buttons on, at the bottom. Yeah. Of and Still I mean, there. yeah, I saw like the three hour podcast and like, so just before that, I was just kind of showing around and uh, like, and, and this might be a dumb question, but like you pay for your own flight and everything, right? Like he, yeah, no, okay. yeah, yeah. He, he took care of my flight. Took oh, care he of did. My, he uh, did. He took care of the yeah. flight. Yeah. Yeah. Do you, do you think he does that with all his guests? Um, 
you know, I'm not really too yeah, sure. Right. But, but just because of his reputation, I mean, I, I would assume that he does. That's know. awesome. Wow, yeah. that's interesting. Oh, yeah. I, I, always, I, I always wondered that. <laughs> there was even had like, uh, like when I walked into the airport, there was even uh, dudes with like, you know, my name holding up. Really? To take me to a limo. To take me to uh, a limo? Awesome. Yeah. So that's awesome. That's so cool. That is a great behind the scenes. Did, what, what's up? What's young Jamie like? Did you, did you interact with him at all? Oh, and J J Jamie's cool. I mean, I didn't get to chat with him as right. much as, as Joe, but uh, yeah, man, Jamie's dope. Like he's super chill dude. Uh, you know, obviously, you know, super tight with Joe does a really good job with him, you know, did yeah. a really good job communicating with him. And actually, I'm pretty sure it was Jamie who booked on my flights and stuff like that. Yeah, he does the, so he does that type of that, he got he got an exit he got an exit seat for me uh there nice. on the current. So he's got yeah. a great he's got a great job. He always gets yeah. so much he always gets so much credit for like, wow, this guy can pull up anything. I'm like, he's just Googling it, like it's not that yeah. hard, but he's great at that. And that's cool. That's he's got a great job. He gets to hang out with Joe, book things, and basically he produces the podcast, which is so cool. Yeah. But uh, so on that episode, on that show, it was actually a, a very rare episode because one, it had a title. All his, he never has titles in his on his podcast, but it was called "The Pot Debate" with Dr. Mike Hart and Alex Berenson, and and uh, and it was like a debate format, which he rarely does. He rarely has more than one person, and he says he doesn't like to yeah. do it. But uh, so Alex Berenson, is that like uh, your rival? Do you hate that guy or what? <laughs> I mean, he just, he wrote a book that obviously I completely disagree, disagree with. with right. uh, I mean, I don't really know what Alex's like motives are for like writing that. Like he doesn't really come across as like, you know, a malevolent dude. Like, yeah, I, yeah. Um, but at the same time, you know, I think that, you know, he, he his message is, is uh, more or less just kind of wrong. Yeah. You know, um, I think that, you know, uh, and one thing too, I, I, I'm not sure if I mentioned this in the podcast, not with Joe, but there was only one study in that entire book that said that THC can do anything to an adult spring. <clears throat> and it was a very, very weak study. So, I mean, there wasn't, there wasn't much um, substance in that book whatsoever. So it was pretty easy for me to like to spell yeah. his arguments because it didn't really have any science to kind of back it up. Yeah. A lot of his data was like, like cherry picked and like he, like, like it's not peer reviewed, right? Like he fabricated. He went to, uh, you know, the the uh, University of New York, I think it was, and had some researcher friend there, and then they kind of put out all this data. But like you can't find that data on the internet or on PubMed. Like yeah. It's not if yeah. you want to get into a debate with someone, like you need to bring up like peer reviewed articles that are on PubMed. You can't just make up your own research with your buddy at NYU. You know? Yeah, I remember as a viewer, even a year ago when I listened to it. I remember thinking that I remember thinking like that your argument was much better. And Joe was very nice at the end. He yeah. was like, all right, like we heard both sides and everything. But I think like he was kind of with you a lot during the podcast. And I think that just from a bystander's point, I wasn't sitting there with notes, listening to every little detail. But it seemed like uh, your argument was definitely much more convincing to me. Um, so marijuana. So I want to talk about that. So yeah. as far as my experience with marijuana, let's just say uh, – I'm definitely qualified to talk on the subject. I know about it. Um, but in America, right, it's illegal. It's illegal, right? So, uh, Federally, so I, but legally in some in some. Right, state. right, right. So I'll talk about that a little bit later. But um, so for those of you, for those uh, who've never listened to you, say they're like an old, stuck-up, stuffy, like American parent who hates marijuana, what would be yeah. like your, your elevator pitch on like why marijuana should be considered like a medicine and not just like a bad drug for your kids? Sure. So, I mean, really what we have to do is we need to look at the evidence and we need to start looking at it as a medicine instead of like a street drug. Now, that being said, you know, am I against people using, you know, cannabis and marijuana you know, recreationally? No, I'm not. But at the same time, you know, those people, they're only looking at, medicine, at, at cannabis as a recreational drug, right? Okay. They're not looking at it as something that can be used as medicine. So right. they need to shift their mindset, right? You're not going to convince someone that like a street drug is good for you. You're going to convince someone maybe that like, you know, a medicine is good for you. So they need to understand that marijuana is a medicine and it's used for medical purposes and it, uh, and it can be really, really effective. Yeah. 
Uh, like that's a great pitch. And I mean, I guess I I've kind of always considered it recreational. I think I don't know if I have anything I would need to treat it, but there's definitely a perception, right? So like, so how often do you how often do you smoke it? Like every day, once once in a while. So, I mean, I generally use CBD oil daily. Okay. Okay. Um, you know, Which is I, much different as far as no, yeah. like as far as the, re the psycho reaction, like you don't get yeah. stoned off of uh, some CBD, yeah. right? So usually uh, like I'll take about 20, 20 milligrams or so in the morning. Um, and then sometimes I'll take another 20 milligrams or so um, in the afternoon. I am though, this is kind of, you know, a good point. <clears throat> I am one of those people that sometimes can get a little bit, um, activate it from from the CBD. So okay. I generally don't take it at night too too often, just because sometimes it can keep me up. Now again, some people find that CBD is great for uh, for making them sleep, right? And you know, even if I have like a ton of myrcene on board, um, you know, I don't find that it really sedates me. But for other people, they find that it does. Um, <clears throat> but CBD can increase BDNF. Uh, brain-derived uh, naturopathic factor, which is so it's increase in exercise. So, you know, it can give you that little bit of like you know, well-being or almost like euphoria feeling, which, you know, is obviously very, very pleasant to feel, but not yeah. when, you're, when you're just going to bed, you know? Right. Um, okay. So, yeah. 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 But, but like, what about the, uh, the cannabis and the THC? Like, is that something you do less frequently than CBD? Yeah. I mean, um, I don't like to, to develop like too much of a tolerance to, to anything. Um, so generally, you know, use like a cannabis oil, uh, like fairly like sparingly. And I would never use more than like 30 milligrams at a time. Like, okay. okay. So, you know, when I see people out at like parties and stuff, I'm like, Oh, I just took 50 milligrams. I'm like, man, you're crazy. Like, <laughs> I mean, I mean um, if it works for you, like great. Yeah. But, like, for, for the most part, like, you know, you don't want to develop too much of a tolerance, right? That's not, that's not, it's not a good thing. Right. Uh, you know, and people kind of, you know, have this like pride, like, well, I can handle like 500 energies of THC. <laughs> okay, but what are you going to feel like the next day when you have yeah. like, you know, you're going to get yeah. So yeah. I, uh, yeah, and again, I have no, no like sign, I will admit, I have no scientific evidence for like, you know, not going over 30 milligrams a day. Um, but that's just me like personally. Yeah. Yeah. You're a doctor and you have like a smart approach behind it. And I, just, I, I do think it's funny, like when the, with the perception and like, you're like kind of the cannabis doctor and like you're on Joe Rogan as like the pro weed side. It's funny because a lot of people think about weed and they just think about like a stoner bro, you know, like smoking a blunt and going to like a, a concert or like a, ripping a bong and watching like a Seth Rogen movie or something like that. <laughs> but uh, like, that's like the perception a little bit of like a weed. And it's funny to see like, you have been known as the weed guy, but you look at your Instagram and stuff, you're working out, you're eating healthy, but you you have like more of the doctor side. But so like in Canada, it's legal. Legal correct? federally. Federally yeah. legal. So in America, it's not, and I'm in America. And I, I went to college, I spoke weed all the time with my friends and stuff, but it, I think it'd be weird if uh, it, it became legal. It would be like a little cultural adjustment as far as like, I don't know, like everyone has beer and wine at a restaurant. And like if, if, if people could walk into a restaurant, like just stinking up of like the THC and cannabis, like it is like the cultural element. And I think that perception, is that different in Canada or like, what is that like in Canada? And how, cause, cause if that line can be crossed, I think that you can more quickly cross the line to looking at it as medicine. So yeah, you know what well, I mean? Yeah, I, I, I agree with you like a thousand percent, you know, and the fact that I think that, you know, legalization um, can make it more of a medicine. And just from the fact that, you know, more people are going to have access to it and more people are going to feel the effects of it. And they're going to understand that, like, wow, like this is not something that, you know, can be just used recreationally. Like I can use this medicinally. Like meaning like, <clears throat> you know, I don't necessarily have to smoke weed to, you know, get high. I'm going to mm -hmm. Take away some anxiety, maybe to take away some depression, maybe to help, right. us, maybe to help take away some pain. You know, right. if you're someone who's like, like a kid, I mean, then I think you know you should really be going. If you're like seizure disorder, I mean, you don't. And again, no offense to some you know bud tenders, I'm sure they're incredibly, incredibly uh, have have uh, you know a ton of knowledge. But you know, when you're dealing with like kids with seizures, it's a real medical condition. You know, and maybe some other pharmaceuticals are involved that need to be you know titrated down. Um, then you want to definitely want to go, you know, more to a, a physician, a doctor, make sure okay. that you're being straightened out, right? You don't yeah. want to, you don't want to take your kid with the seizures, <laughs> you 
bartender and kind of hope for the best. You know what I mean? Right, so, right, right. Yeah, right. You get some like actual medical advice. Uh, but yeah, like America, I guess, is like behind on it, and it's it's kind of weird. It's interesting, like. Uh, but yeah, so so your business, right? Your business. Uh, you're the ready to go clinic. That's your business, right? And that's like uh, that is uh, a family medicine, like or like your business model is what you treat patients and prescribe them things. Yeah, so I mean, I'm I'm a family doctor, family doctor okay. trained, um, and uh, so you know, I still do some family medicine, but you know, I really just try to do like the most effective thing possible, right? So when I came into uh, medicine, it's 2013, so it was really easy for us to subscribe cannabis in 2014 so you know right away I, you know i got into, into cannabis knowing that you know it could be helpful um but that being said you know um there's other medicines that i use that are, that are definitely helpful as well like i'm really big into um hormone restoration for both males and females you know i have a lot of you know menopausal women that you know, i treat with hormones i got some guys on trt do well with that um another thing that we can chat about if you little if you want to too is i prescribe ketamine for a lot of my patients so, you know, uh, ketamine is something that can be really effective for, for, for depression and for my, uh, my perception of ketamine is that it's, it's like, I don't know a lot. I've never done it. I, I've never had friends that my, my perception is it's bad. That's my perception of just hearing the word. So I yeah. am interested. I am interested in that. So yeah. like, what is it? So, I mean, all drugs can be used and all drugs can be abused, you know, and a couple of years ago, you know, I, I didn't know too much about like therapeutic efficacy of ketamine, you know, for, for treating medical conditions. Um, but at the same time too, you know, it's not everyone, you don't get like a hundred response rate to cannabis. And even the people who do respond, you know, sometimes it's just not quite enough to, you know, break the negative thinking or okay. um, all the mental health state that they have. Right. So yeah. what, uh, what ketamine can do, um, and actually you guys are, you know, we, we talked about how cannabis, you know, more, uh, you know, advanced in, in, in the States with regards to cannabis, but you guys, yeah would kind of a little bit be more advanced in, in this regard because uh, in the States, there's actually a drug called Eskimine, um, which is Never ketamine. It. It's ketamine, but it's intranasal and it's FDA approved. <clears throat> so really? we don't have that in Canada. And what, what like, uh, what is ketamine like categorized as? It, like, it's like, it's kind of like a, it's very like a good down, question. Very is, good a down, question. is it a downer or like, yeah, what is it? Very good question. So yeah. the reason why it's a good question is because it often gets grouped into psychedelic medicines. So, you know, psychedelics, the class of psychedelics are LSD, uh, psilocybin, and DNA. So, you know, it often gets grouped in there because it can cause this kind of like dissociative effect, right? Yeah, yeah, dissociative but effect. Thing, but right. the thing is, is that it's not. It's it, Ketamine is an anesthetic. So it's used in, in emergency rooms, you know, um, all okay. over. So what it does is once you take it, so I prescribe ketamine orally. Okay. So like I said, in the States, you guys have it. IV, or, uh, uh, intranasally. But if you look online at most of the studies, most of the studies are actually on uh, IV. And I do have uh, in, um, like uh, emergency room doctor friends who uh, who give ketamine, IM, intramuscularly when patients are you know, really, really agitated and things like that. Okay. So, you know, there's, there's various different uses for it. But, um, you know, getting to like the main uses, why I, why I use it and why I like it. So I don't believe that. Um, you know, everyone that, that the answer for everyone who has an addiction is sobriety. Um, it definitely helps some people, right? So, you know, if you look at- I respect at, that. I so, respect that, yeah. So if you look at, uh, you know, Eminem, you look at Russell Brand, those <laughs> two guys, for whatever reason, total sobriety works for them. You know, those guys, from what I understand, they don't use any drugs. There's no cycle. I know, I know Eminem relapsed, but he's, he's back to being completely sober. Okay. 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 <laughs> when did he realize? Well, I just know that was the name of his album. It was, oh, uh, I don't know. That was, it was like, that, uh, was like, that was like 10 years ago. Though. Yeah, that was a while back. That was a while I think back. It's been right, like right. 10 years. Okay. That was a while back. Right, right, right. right. Kind of learned but I actually, so, I actually, I know Russell Brand. I actually didn't know that. I'm a huge Eminem fan. I didn't know off the top of my head that he was completely sober. Yeah. Maybe I, yeah. I guess I'm not as good of a fan as you, as I should be. No, <laughs> no I mean, that's, that's, that's what they say anyway. That, that's what I know. But okay. anyways, getting back to my point, yeah. like it works, it works for, for those guys, right? But it doesn't work for everybody. And meaning like, you know, I have patients who told me that like the worst years of their life were the years where they didn't take any, any cannabis, you know? And I think that some people um, do require some dissociation to fully heal and to fully recover. I think that part of 
the healing process with these medicines. It's not just, you know, hitting certain receptors and things like that. Obviously, that's going to help. But it's really just that dissociative period. You know, like there's lots of people who have gone like literally years, decades of the life without ever feeling any type of like dissociation and any type of just like complete, clear headedness where there's there's nothing coming in, there's nothing going out and, and, and they're just still. And what I find ketamine, if you give that in the morning on an empty stomach, you can get that dissociative effect. You know, it's not going to last for too, too long. It probably lasts, you know, for some people it might last 20 minutes. Some people it might last up to an hour, but probably, you know, average is more like 20 to 30 minutes on average where, you, where they're kind of dissociated. And then about an hour and a half later, you know, they're perfectly fine. They can drive, they can go to work or do whatever. So I like that drug because it gives them a, a, a dissociative effect. But then immediately after, you know, they're back to normal. Okay. An hour. Okay. After. They're not, they don't need to like sleep, other, it off, sleep it off or anything. Yeah. And then the other thing too, is that I only prescribe it uh, three, three days a week okay. because I want the patients to reflect on how they're feeling those other days. Okay. Like I want them to know how they're feeling when they take the ketamine. I want them to know, you know, how they feel the day after the t- they take the ketamine. And, you know, I want them to know like, what about that two day period when you don't have yeah, it? Yeah. Yeah. So right? and then, yeah. that makes sense. So is most is most of the uh, the the things that you're treating, like mental mm-hmm. health and like anxiety and stuff like that. Mental health, yeah. I mean, that's just what like a lot of people are are struggling with these days. Yeah. And, and, you know, I'm sort of um, like you're not, not you're not you're not going to fix like a broken arm, right? Like you are more like in the mind. I'm more in, in the mind and and more in uh, you know improving quality of life. Okay. So, you know, it's uh, it's definitely. I'm I'm kind of for a lot of people. I'm I'm sort of their last resort. Okay. Also, a lot of people kind of come to me when when all else has failed. So, you know, I see a lot of people who are you know extremely suicidal. Uh, a lot of people who have you know stage four cancer. Okay. Uh, wow. Patient, That's patient different. Like, yeah. Yeah, because like I'm I'm very uh, curious about anxiety. I, I have a specific question. I think it'll lead to more of a conversation about anxiety. But I was listening to one of your videos about. Uh, it was about teenagers and CBD, and sure. it was. But it was a. That's not what my question is. It was about. Uh, there was a blind group, and then a group who took it. But then they they the results were an anxiety score, and that was like how they scored it. And my, so my, my question was like, how do you give an anxiety test to get a score? And then yeah. Uh, so I mean, again, like I fully agree with you, Sean. Like all, um, like every single you know test that we do or study that we do for mental health is you know ultimately subjective okay, right okay. so if i'm doing a blood pressure study like i'm just taking your blood pressure and i'm writing down the numbers it's 100 percent objective right right um you know when you're doing you know the, these types of studies with with questionnaires i mean obviously they were, okay. to, be, to, be, to be objective because afterwards you do add up a score and you can say well you know their anxiety score is less than what it was, you know, the month previous, the month prior. So, you know, when you have a score, you can say that this is objectively better. Um, you know, unfortunately, though, like, you know, the process of, you know, tal- of tabulating those scores every single time is somewhat subjective. Yeah, yeah. Because it's hard because they're, they're not like, is your shirt blue or red? It's probably yeah. like, how did you feel this morning or something like that? So it's harder. I think anxiety is so interesting because it goes to like mindset and everything. So you treat a lot of patients. So, like I consider myself like a, a low anxiety person and I, I'm generally happy. And, and I think that relates to positive mindset and I don't know if it's nature or nurture, if it's the books I've read, but like the people that you treat, uh, and the people with anxiety, do you, I, my observation, which is nothing like yours. It's just like, it seems like a lot of the times the people with anxiety or depression, it relates to like a, an event in their life that it is bad. You know what I mean? hundred percent, hundred percent, you know, like, I, um, and yeah, this is a great, you know, thing to talk about because I, you know, posted yeah. something about, you know, how CBD can decrease learned fear, right? But like, if you think of like PTSD, anxiety, all these things, I mean, sure, some people might be more predisposed to some, you know, anxiety than, than other people. That makes sense. Like some people are more predisposed to diabetes. Some people are more predisposed to Red hair, people. black hair. You think it's like that? Yeah. So, okay. so why would some people more be you know predisposed to mental health? Kind of makes makes okay. sense. Okay, um, I buy that. But that being said, you know I think that it's a very very small percentage. I think that you know eighty percent or more of the anxiety disorders that people have are learned. 
I think they learned. learned. Okay. You know, I, cause I, cause I, I believe in it. And this, this pisses people off when I say this, like, I think I'm like, well, if you're depressed, like try, like, well, obviously exercise, but like try thinking positively and try like putting yourself into a situation where you're happier, like try doing some things that don't involve like uh, medicating yourself with whatever it is like Valium or I don't know the like antidepressant drugs. Like it, it, I don't, it, it just seems to me like you'll be happier if your life's better. Like it's not like you're not going to be happier if you take an antidepressant. And, uh, you know, that, it's like a kind of a hot topic if I say that sometimes, like, cause people are like, no, like it's depression. It's, it's a sickness. It's a disease. And it, in, in your experience, like, it's just, you think it's, you think it is kind of a learned thing, but maybe they have a bad situation in their life. Like a, a, a parent dies or a friend dies or a loved one dies or, or something really bad happens and then they're depressed, but then they need a doctor to help them or like, well, yeah, like, like you think it is mostly learned, right? Like, and can, I, they, can I think, they skip I think the doctor's mostly, step? I, th- I think it's mostly learned. I think, okay. you know, you know. Learned, I, I, learned meaning like caused, like it, you, something happened to cause you to feel like that? Yeah, yeah. So like, I'm not saying that like it's their fault, meaning that like if someone hurt you and then right, you right. Know, that you're hurt, like that's not your your fault that's what i'm saying but what i am saying is you still did learn learn that like you weren't born like that you know someone hurt you and then from that hurt you know you learn to be right, anxious right a lot of people like <clears throat> the worst like i said i mean we're just kind of, kind of talking about you know anxiety now and, and right. not to miss that at all but like some of the patients i see have like agoraphobia right so like you know what's that I don't, like so they won't leave their home right they're and they're basically like afraid of like everything it's like when you know some people think about anxiety they're like oh you know this person won't like go up and talk to a girl yeah or like get nervous when they're public speaking right and like yes th- that's definitely a form of anxiety but that's probably more what i'm talking about it's but probably cor- wild and and and, and you yeah. know it, it doesn't really you know interfere that much right right like function. but agoraphobia but is out. fear to leave their house yeah, if that's you can't leave your house, that's really so. I see a lot of vets, right? Veteran patients, and a lot okay. of those, you know, they they don't like leaving their home because you know, again, they've learned that like going to a grocery store is something that that's very very dangerous because to them, you know, when they're not in control, when there's you know lights around, when there's people around, you know, they see that as like, okay, I'm in danger here. I'm I'm, I'm in I'm, I'm in a threatened state. Yeah. I, you know, I mean, to me, it, to me, it just seems so obvious. Like, well, yes, when you were at a, in war, that was the case. But now you're just safely in suburban Canada. Like, you're not. There's not a war. Like, I guess that doesn't. You can't just say that yeah. to them, right? Yeah, you can't, yeah. You can't. You can't just say that to, to someone because that's that's not how they perceive it. Like in their brain, like they really do perceive. You know these these areas. Um, as being very, very dangerous. And, and that's what they've, and that's what they have learned. So, you know, the only way to, you know, unlearn that is to, you know, use some exposure therapy, which, you know, I believe is the very best thing for um, anxiety treatment. So like, whatever you're afraid of, you need to expose yourself to. So if you're afraid of the grocery store, go to the grocery store. If you're afraid of the mall, go to the mall. But at the same time too, you know, you, you, you want to do it gradually. You know, there's different ways of doing it. You know, some people call it like flooding, like just, you know, do it all, all at once. Sometimes that works. But most of the times it doesn't. A lot of times people regress when they do that because they're like, oh, like I tried to do what you do and then look, it just made me have a panic attack. And then you know, that just makes their, their anxiety uh-huh. worse. Even worse. Uh-huh. So, you know, if you're like that, like, you know, 8 p.m., maybe you go to the grocery store and like no one's around and maybe right. you take someone with you. You know what I mean? And maybe the next time, you know, you might go at 7.30, maybe you still take someone with you. Maybe the next time, you know, you go 7.30 or 8, right. but you don't take that person with you. So you have to do it like gradually. So exposure therapy is, is the only thing that really works for, you know, um, treating anxiety. It's just that most people don't want to face the fears. They want they yeah. want their anxiety without, without doing exposure right. Right. But it, so exposure it, therapy has nothing to do with any type of CBD or any type of medicine. No, it's just straight no. up facing your fears, which uh, yeah. is something I would probably tell them to do. I'd be like, go yeah. to the grocery store. But yeah. like, uh, so, but they, but they maybe come to you because they're looking for a way to get around it. And just maybe you give them something. And- yeah. I mean, and it's the same thing too. with like someone who's like, you know, depressed. So like, 
I I truly believe, and I mean, most of the evidence I think would would, would suggest that like exercise is definitely the best thing for depression, right? But I completely understand uh, patients who, um, you know, are so depressed that they can't exercise. Okay. But like, what do you do in that type of situation, right? And you really just give them, you know, you just tell them that the best thing you can do is just to make progress. So you just do more than you did yesterday. Walk and, five and push-ups. Cool. Yeah. yeah, or if if you did five push-ups yesterday, do do ten push-ups yeah. today. Yeah. You know that that's progress. As long as you're making progress, you'll feel good about yourself. That's what makes us feel good about ourselves. We're making progress. You know that's why sometimes you know people say you know why are these you know billionaires or whatever like what like aren't they satisfied with like don't they need more? And it's just that like yes they're billionaires but they're also human. Yeah. And, humans need 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 to feel like they're progressing yes and, and if you don't feel like you're, you're 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 progressing in your life then you're not going to, to feel be good happy that, you know people keep going once they achieve these incredible feats because it's right. not necessarily the feat itself or the achievement or even you know Absolutely. that achievement it's that whole journey right yes. and they can start that journey again because they crave the journey Yes. Um, yes. You know, that, that's kind of where that that, that mentality um, sets in you know humans have a need to progress. so i just yeah i just want to like tell those people like and i'm no doctor or anything but just like explain that to them like we're evolutionarily wired to need progress to be happy so yeah. you are frozen and you're not making you're like scared to do anything and make any progress but like uh but so, so if someone comes to you from that, like I, I would, I would, I would imagine prescribing them like marijuana wouldn't be helpful. Maybe like, I guess well, maybe it depends, but I feel like that makes you like uh, paranoid a little bit. So if you're already paranoid. So, so for, for, uh, you know, someone who has, who's having a lot of trouble with the mental health, there's two ways that CBD and THC can really help. So again, you know, CBD, like I uh, mentioned earlier, can decrease learned, learned fear. Okay. You want to talk about those three different ways, Sean? Yeah. Okay, cool. Absolutely. So again, this was done on, on rodents, but it's one of my favorite studies done. Okay. Uh, so down at the CBD can decrease learned fear. So three different ways. So one is it can decrease it uh, acutely. So that just means that like if you had CBD on board and then like you, you know, went outside and drove in your car and you know someone like cut you off or something like that, you you may have less of like a startled type of reaction to that okay. because you're gonna you're gonna express less fear. Okay. Number two, it decreases uh, memory reconsolidation. So, like, say if like you go out and you're in that car, you're in the same situation, and that person cuts you off. Like, some people might have it in their head that like, okay, this is what happens when I get in my car. Someone someone cuts me off, and and I have this agitated state. That's a learned thing that they learned, right. and then that gets stored in their mind. And then because that gets stored in their mind, they won't drive the car again, Oof. or they'll be really really fearful of getting in the car. Ooh, right. Okay. Okay. Just memory reconsolidation. Um, so there's less. So you're less likely to store that as as memory into uh, the okay. memory this time. Cool. And the third time is that it can. Uh, the third thing is that way is that it can enhance uh, extinction. <clears throat> so, what if you've already had this memory built up in your head and you want to get rid of it? So CBD can help eliminate that. Okay. And I should mention too. Lastly, that you know some people might be thinking, well, I wonder what would happen if they did. You know CBD and exposure therapy together, right? Which is what yeah. I they preach for all my patients. Yeah, that sounds great. Uh, well, they uh, they're doing a study on it now, so I don't know the uh, results for it. So uh, if I'm lucky enough to be back on your show, maybe I'll discuss that. With you. Uh, hell yeah, that seems like it makes perfect sense to me based on what you're saying. The combination of CBD and exposure therapy. Go yeah. to the grocery store at seven thirty or eight with one person and hey and take one hit of cbd like that's like based on the way you're yeah. describing it that seems like it perfect makes perfect yeah sense. And, and then the other thing i was going to say sean you know because I, I mentioned cbd and thc so how can you know thc help and yeah. I, I agree with you that you know most people should try to avoid thc in the daytime that's how i treat most yeah. of my patients but at the same time too you know some people really really do need it so i'm not completely uh, averted to it, or I, I, I wouldn't say I never prescribed THC in the day, but it shouldn't be used. Um, it shouldn't be used, you know, judiciously in the day. It should just yeah. be. Used and and, and those three, those three things you just described about CBD make perfect sense to me. Like, is THC completely different? Yeah. Like, so it seems it seems like it'd be completely different to me. But here's the way that the THC can really help people. 
So it can help with sleep and sleep is critical for your overall health. Yeah. Like sleep literally. And you know, I, I'll go on record saying sleep is just as important for your health as exercise, nutrition. Like you, if you don't sleep well, that's going to affect your well uh, your physical performance, your mental performance, just your, your overall mental health as much as exercise or as much uh, as, as, as eating. And, you know, people know how, and I know big I am into health and eating and exercise. Yeah, yeah. Sleep is so important. Yeah. So, and, and because too, sleep sets, lets, uh, sorry, sets up your routine, right? Right. So if I ask someone, what time do you go to bed and get up every day? If they tell me, man, I go to bed at 10 p.m., get up at 6 a.m. every day, that tells me a lot about their mental health. Man. Yeah. Where I, I, go, you, I go to the I have a class every, um, every morning, 5 a.m. for the gym. Yeah, and that's, like, that's that's huge, right? Yeah, and whereas yeah. like if you say to someone, you know, what time you go to bed, what time you get up, like, uh, I don't really know. Like sometimes like, you know, watch TV till like one, maybe three, might get up at like eight or nine, might be eleven, like, you know, you know that that person is not in a good state. You know that they don't have routine. Interesting. And, and at worst, you know, they may even be aimless. And once yeah. you get aimless, that's when you pick up vices. Like people who have something to do all the time, who you know yeah. are passionate about what they're doing, they don't pick up addiction. They don't pick up vices. Right. Have something to do. Yeah, like you're. Yeah, like ugh, that, makes so, like, that makes so much sense. It makes so much yeah. sense. It's the people who are who are aimless that like have have nothing to do, have no passions that pick up all these all these addictions. And the addictions don't necessarily have to be drugs. Addictions could be negative thinking. Addictions could be being mean to other Complaining, people. Complaining, inter- internet, internet yeah. trolling. Yeah, internet porn. trolling. You know, like, and, yeah. And people are just looking like to play all these like power games all day type of thing, right? Yeah, but, yeah. But the people who you know are who you know are really happy. They just want to. I know it sounds corny, but they just want to put love out into the world. They just <laughs> it's true, man. It's people. true. They whenever they see other people doing well, like it makes them happy. Like they right, like, right. Man, jealousy I is. I always say, like, I've I've eliminated like all jealous like bones from my body, like because yeah. if I ever feel it, because it's a natural emotion, I like have already yeah. trained it away, like, and yeah. it's a, it's such a ne- it's such a bad negative way to be, and that's one of those things that yeah, if you're aimless, you might pick up. And yeah. it's crazy. I always knew sleep was important, but I never actually looked at it exactly like that. That sleep not only is it important because it re- regenerates your body and all that, it also yeah. puts you on a schedule, which is cause or effect or whatever of having a healthy, happy life. Uh, yeah. Wow, that's so well, true. I, I mean, I, I really, I'm really big on having, you know, a routine. I mean, I think it's okay to like break routine sometimes too. Yeah. You don't get, get too bogged down. Um, but at, at the same time too, like sleep is like the pillar to that routine. Man. Right. Like if you're, if your sleep routine is messed up, your whole routine is probably going to be messed up. Absolutely. And like, <laughs> And like, I'm super big into like killing that very first hour of the day. You know, yeah. like if you wake up and you don't know what you're doing that first hour, you don't know what you're going to be doing the rest of the day. It just totally you know? puts you on a whole different path. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And you only um, want to get that momentum going. So you yeah. get up and you, know, you get a few things going. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, so we were originally saying that <laughs> THC will help you sleep, in which case that is a positive element because someone who might be aimless and off track. Uh, if they're trying to get back on track, they just need to get that sleep. It could be it could be a tool to help them with that. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Like just just sleep in itself can be you know so important for for regulating someone's mental health and like literally like solving it. Not everyone, but like completely. Like just fixing sleep can almost fix everything. You know, some people have like this like daily headache. Um, you know, but when they sleep well, they don't have it. Yeah, you know? interesting. And then the other thing too, I should mention just on THC and sleep, this is really important to actually, so okay. I'm glad we're talking about it, is, um, so THC can reduce nightmares. So I have seen in one case study where the CBD can reduce nightmares, but it's more the THC that helps reduce nightmares. So, you know, again, I see a lot of veterans in my patients or sorry, in my practice. So, you know, those, and again, it's not just veterans that have PTSD. So I want to make that distinction as well. You know, you could be a rape victim. You know, there's, you could be in a car accident. There's a million Any traumatic things. situation, right? Yeah, and any traumatic um, right. situation. And they're all expressed the, the exact same way. I mean, like, you know, whether you were a veteran or whether you were like, you know, a sexual assault victim or like, 
you know, in some horrific car accident, they all express themselves the same way in the fact that they get a lot of agoraphobia. They don't like leaving their home. They don't like being around crowds. Um, and they also get, get nightmares at night. Um, but uh, the other impo really important point I wanted to make about that was, um, you know, a lot of people say to me, oh, but like if I take THC, is that going to ruin my REM sleep? And, you know, so I, I posed this question actually to uh, Dr. Ethan Russo, who's one of you know, the world's you know, foremost experts on, on medical cannabis, and if not like the, the kind yeah. of medical experts. And, uh, you know, he said that the incremental reduction that you uh, would get from THC uh, use is, is not harmful. So, you know, basically meaning that, you know, maybe there'll be some, some drop in your, in your levels of REM sleep, but it's not going to be significant enough to, to affect like your overall function quality. Okay. So, so it makes, it makes it worth it then. Yeah. So I think it's, I think it's really important for people to know that. Okay. Whew. Man, that's awesome. I just learned a lot about that. Uh, mm -hmm. That's so cool, man. THC, marijuana, like, yeah, we gotta, we gotta definitely get on board here in America, I think. And I think it's, you guys, till, do. you guys do uh, been till, i love america but that's one thing we're lacking in uh, get me down there to speak sean get me down there to speak <laughs> okay i'll do what i can i'm, I'm growing my uh, i'm growing myself up here but uh yeah is that actually one of your goals to kind of like break into america a little more and like do some speaking and stuff yeah, yeah i mean you know i love canada but i love america too yeah so, so as it as it well, i mean i think you're well branded that as it may be starts legalizing here you could be one of the people that is like right on the forefront with you so you're i think you're, I, I think you're i think you'll be one of the people for sure i'd love uh, to be. yeah love I, to. I have uh i saw like you did a post today and something that you're interested in is about stoicism right yeah like uh so i, I want you to talk about that a little bit like i, I know a little bit uh yeah. but I'll it's just like it's kind of a mindset stuff that. right sure okay so i uh i went to this conference actually in 2016 and uh, it was called the 212 conference and um, Tim Ferriss was there and, you know, I had a brief conversation with him, which is nice because like I said, we've been following yeah. each other on he Twitter. Knows you. So yeah, awesome. um, he was there and then Ryan Holiday was there. Yep. So uh, Ryan um, gave a little bit of a, of a brief talk in the room I, I was in and, you know, we had a, a brief interaction as well. And, you know, he was you know very, very polite to me. You know, we, we kind of seemed to... Um, uh, to get along pretty well. Yeah. Um, but uh, interesting enough, um, they gave everyone in this conference a gift bag. And the gift bag was insane. So the gift bag had uh, the five-minute journal in it. Okay. So you know, if you're watching this right now, uh, if you go to my Instagram story, you'll probably see the five-minute journal for, for my morning because <laughs> I have like that every day. You know, I think gratitude is is something that's, uh, you know, it's low hanging fruit. Like just be more grateful. That'll increase your happiness. So you're talking Absolutely. about you know, people who are, who are like depressed. We talk about learn, learn fear, learn to be grateful, right? Like learn, like learn to appreciate. Like just practice. Just and the five minute journal is probably a good way to do that. That's where you just write yeah. what you're grateful for five minutes in the morning. Yeah. Right. So I write down three things that I'm grateful for every morning. Uh, I write down three things that are, that are going to make today great. And then I have two positive af uh, affirmations. So okay. I'm, I am whatever. So, you know, if, if you do that every morning, that's going to really help, you know, spark uh, your mindset. This might, be, this, might be, wait, this might be a silly question, like, because I'm very grateful, but I never actually wrote it down. Maybe I should. But, like, do you ever run out of things? Because, like, if you write three a day and you do it for, like, every week, I'll be like, all right, my mom, my dad, my brother, my cousin, my sister. Do you ever, like, run out of things? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hard? So, like, sometimes what I do, and I mean, I do write the same things. Sometimes. Okay, okay. You repeat. Sometimes, you repeat. Like, you'll, like, you'll, like, forget. But, yeah, like. I'll try and think like, you know, maybe like one like relationship, uh, you know, that I'm really grateful for now, like maybe one thing that like happened yesterday. Okay. Um, and, and maybe, you know, like one, uh, like one thing that, you know, might've happened like on the fly. Like, okay. like so for example, okay. So I didn't write this down today, but okay. uh, for example, like um, I, I don't have my, uh, I didn't have my, my shin guards for, for sparring today. Okay. So, um, you know, I got, uh, I just noticed though, that when I was on the way that, that Amazon had delivered them, right? It's like, uh -huh. if I had got them in time, that would have been something I would have written down. You know, like, <laughs> I'm I got my, my shin guards with that. But now I'll just say I'm grateful that I got my shin guards so I can inspire. There you, know, you go. Yeah. Next, next week. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That's, so you gotta, you gotta be a little creative, but that's, that's yeah. the, that's the exercise. Just yeah. always being just grateful, like, but for like every little thing, like I'm grateful that I have water, like it's just this, this table yeah, that, yeah. And, that and I didn't get the crash today. And I know I'm going to get back to stoicism thing in a sec. Mm -hmm. 
um, yeah, like just, just on that note, like if you are angry, if you find yourself get, getting angry, like the two things that you should, you know, do immediately um, or try to identify the cost of anger. So like, if I do get angry, what is that going to cost me in, in my life? And then at the same time too, um, don't focus on whatever you're angry on. Try to focus on something that you're grateful for, you know? And, and if you do that, you know, again, like, like all this stuff is like baby, meaning like you have to do it every day, right? Like you can't just like think like, oh, I thought positively yesterday. And yeah. Put- it's like no man. It's, it's like a be- shower, right? You got to do yeah. it daily. Yeah. Like if you don't work out in your body, uh, you know, almost every day, like it's gonna, it's gonna yeah. go. Yeah, I worked out. I worked out like two years ago. I'm good. Like it's not yeah, like that. Yeah. You can't, you can't do that. It's gotta be. It's gotta be all the time. And the same yeah. thing with the mental health. So you need to work on right. that. You know, right. all the time. You can't can't just be you know for one day. Oh, I'm just gonna read one book and like all oh, my life's gonna be good. No man, you're gonna as soon as right. you finish. Like, you know, you got to start reading the next book if you want to be up or else, or else all that stuff is going to go and other stuff's going to creep in and, and you're going to have almost like wasted your time. So it's got to be all the time every day. Right. So, um, I know some people don't like to, to kind of hear that, but it's, uh, it's necessary for people to hear them because that's what really works. Right. Yep. I agree. Um, but, I agree. Okay. So I didn't get back to your source and things. So, um, how wait, you guys, wait, 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 you were saying what was in that, uh, uh, yeah, five minute yeah, journal yeah. you said yeah, there was, yeah. another, was there other stuff in there that gives, yeah. that gives so, back? So, so there was uh ego is the enemy was ryan holly's book. okay so at that point in my life i had knew of him quite a bit through through tim ferris i listened to a podcast of his but you know he wasn't like one of the main people i guess i would follow kind of thing um so i read that book and i was like holy shit this is insane um, like I love, I absolutely love Ego is the Enemy. So right away, I got The Obstacles Away. Um, I read that one. Uh, and now I've read all of his books, actually, I think, ex- except for um, Trust Me Online. It's very okay. first. I've heard actually. Yeah, really I, I never read any of his books. I know his story and I know his, I know his gig. Like, uh, but I, no, Ego is the Enemy, if you, if you suggest one, that'd be the one of his. Yeah. Read. The Obstacles okay. Away is pretty good though, too. Both of them. Okay. Are- both of them. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know if I could pick one. I actually might even pick the obstacles way over you. Uh, really? All right, I'll just do both. I'll just do both. Yeah. I do audio books, so I can. They're, they're very, very small though, so you'll be able to read them in like a couple of days. Okay, nice. Yeah. Um, but anyway, so that's kind of where I was introduced to to stoicism. So you know, I should say that uh, I did read all those books, but the one book that I got right after was the Daily Stoic, and okay. then go on my Instagram story right now. You probably see Daily Stoic there, me reading it in the morning. So I study, I, I, you know, read that book every single day. Uh, I've had it now since like 2016, well, it's 2020. So I'm still reading it every day. So it's kind of wow. interesting. like each year now, you know, every day, because I'm going back over things that I've read now for, for, for three or four years in a row and some things are underlined. So it's kind of cool to see that like, you know, oh yeah, like this is like something I underlined last year. I can understand. That's cool. that. You might like remember when you underlined it and like the thought process yeah. you were in. Yeah, 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 exactly. I, imagine that. Like, oh, I wonder why I didn't pick up on this, but let's like, oh, like maybe you know that passage or this part of the passage is more relevant to my life at that time or that year, and like yeah. you know, or the passage is more relevant to me you know, now at this part of my life. Um, so you know that that that's kind of cool to kind of kind of see. So and then he also too has uh, like the Daily Stoic has a has an email. Um, so there's only one email. I, I mean, there's so many emails you could subscribe to every day. Uh, I do have Tim Ferriss's Five Bullet Friday. That's only once a week. I actually unsubscribed from that like last year because I have so many emails. But I was on that. I was on that. <laughs> um, but but I do get the Daily Stoic one every day. Um, and I would say you know I wouldn't say I read it every day, but I'd say I read it at least you know four four days out of the seven. Um, okay. I only get seven out of seven in, but I read it from the Daily Stoic at least six to seven days a week. Okay, but stoicism overall, my uh, perception of it, Marcus Aurelius back in the the Romans or whatever, and uh, it's basically like you put like they who go down and like live with all the poor people for a little bit and like notice that he was okay and he's like, if I'm okay in a terrible worst situation possible, how can I possibly not be appreciative and okay in in the situation I'm in? Is is that along the right lines of? That's that's uh, perfect. I mean, really, what it is is, I mean, this is super super basic, but. Um, you know, this is really the, the, the premise of stoicism is that you 
don't worry about the things that you can't control. Dude, that's you like do, one of my best strengths. Yeah. Do what you can about the things that you can't control. It's and, so simple. Yeah. And and the other thing too is like it's you know, some people think of stoicism as like, you know, emotionless. Like we're not talking yeah, about Yeah, yeah. Like yeah. You know, the Stoics love Wow. I feel like some people don't know anything. They just imagine someone like very serious all the time. They're very yeah, stoic. Yeah, yeah. No, stoic. it's it's really just about like eliminating the negative emotion and keeping like the positive emotion. You know, that's the way I view it. Maybe I'm just that is that's like the core. Like I don't read that. Like I, that's, yeah. that's what I that's what I think about every day. I think about that every day. It's so it's and it seems like the best advice for everyone. Like I've I've, I've posted about it. Like if you can control the situation control it if you can't control it don't worry about it like yeah don't yeah. worry about it and it just seems so simple to me and it's and it's yeah. and it's, it's a practice skill a little bit but you just see so many people people they they worry like oh what if this happens what if this happens and they go down this path of like what if what if what if what if like i hate insurance i hate like uh like i run a business and like I actually just hired someone else who's a little more like into that stuff because like i don't worry about anything if it's if it's I don't, I hate like planning for things that will never happen. I hate like, well, hypotheticals. Like I like leave my door unlocked a lot. Cause like, well, like, I don't think someone's going to come in and like steal my house. And if they do whatever, man, like, like I just don't yeah. worry about things that are very, very unlikely to happen. And it, and it, and it brings me great happiness and no one's ever robbed my house. And yeah. I kind of, we pretty much just leave our door open. I'm not going to lie. But I feel like since everyone else is locked, they assume ours is locked. I'm a little like that too. I mean, I probably should be. But. Yeah, I probably, like, I probably should be saying this on my podcast, but whatever. <laughs> Don't yeah. rob my house, all your listeners. But, uh, <laughs> but, if you, <laughs> but if you do, you know, just whatever. Just take, John, John probably won't care. I won't care. You know, I can't, you already stole it, so I can't control it. So I'll just go get another TV or whatever you steal. But it's, oh, it feels so good not to worry about that stuff. And, I, and I'm and like, I don't even, like, it's just so great. And uh, so this actually is a good transition because the next okay. thing I wanted to talk about was like kind of physical health and the coronavirus, which is obviously a hot topic. And yeah. I mean, I, I actually, in, in the last 17 years, I uh, I used to be able to say I haven't got sick, but I got, I got sick one time in 17 years. I don't get sick ever. And I think... I mean, I, I exercise. I eat generally healthy. I'm not a, I'm not as healthy as you, probably. I'm not like I'm not a nut about it. But you I think uh, what? <laughs> you got me a nut yeah, I am. I'm calling you a health nut. I am a health nut. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> I am. Uh, but uh, I think it's like a mindset. Like I don't think about it. I don't think like if I do feel a little sniffle in my nose, like I just ignore it. Like like you said before, with anger, like focusing on on being sick might. I think it might get you more sick. So like all this stuff about the coronavirus, like my thing is I kind of, I'm not really thinking about it. I'm not worrying about it. And like, of course the news loves putting headlines out there about it. Yes. I'm going to wash my hands. Like I do that anyway. Yeah. Like, uh, yeah. like, so one, like any thoughts on the coronavirus and two, do you buy that? I haven't been, I've, I haven't been sick in 17 years because I don't focus on it. Uh, so I'll answer both those questions. Okay, they're two different I, questions. I, yeah. I, I, I'll answer the second one first because, yeah, I absolutely do believe that your attitude, you know, uh, can, can definitely change, you know, your um, the way that you respond to, to certain, you know, cool. bacteria. It's great to hear from someone like you. You know, like, and and it's really just because I'm the same way, Sean. Like, I, I can remember the last day uh, I missed work. So I haven't, and like, when I miss, when I say like I haven't missed work in like six years, like, I don't mean like, I've never like missed like a podcast. I've never yeah. missed my appointments. Like I've yeah. never missed, like anything. And again, like I'm not trying to, um, you know, pre preach that like you know I don't need these other things. That like I'm I'm saying that like I'm able to go on because I do use all these other things and because I do keep my body healthy and because you know I do have right right that that like that's definitely a factor. It's not like. You know, I'm, I'm saying that, oh, you just need to like blast through everything and that's it. It's like, no, it's like I, I work out, you know. I, the routine I, that we're I, talking I, about. You know, yeah. I, I make sure that, you know, I eat healthy. I make sure I sleep. So my immune system is just jacked up, right? right. The other thing is that, you know, I do often supplement with um, with uh, mushrooms for for, for, uh, for immunotherapy. So like yeah. chad, uh, reishi, all these things, uh, you know, they can, they can have some pretty good, effect so I'm, I'm not talking about psychoactive mushrooms like okay. so I'm just talking about okay um, 
<laughs> like uh, there's other medicinal mushrooms like the chaga and the reishi, turkey tail, cordyceps, uh, lion's mane is a real big one that a lot of people use for. Uh, for Tim Ferriss, wasn't he like pushing that for a while? What's that? It wasn't Tim Ferriss pushing like the lion's mane mushroom? Yeah, it's like I, the powder. I, I think- I yeah. got that before. So, yeah. You know what? I'm not even kidding. That actually came in that gift bag too. It's a force. <laughs> I believe it. I believe it. That uh, was was from that. Was from it doesn't gift. taste great. It doesn't taste great. I don't love the taste of it, but no, I had I had it for a while. Yeah, I mean, right now I just do the uh, like I'm real big into Paul Stan. So I trust his products the best. Uh, because a lot of, uh, you know, just real real quick note, like if you are interested in getting, you know, uh, you know mushrooms where you want to make sure that they're the the uh the mycelium not the the fruit and body so a lot of the products like on amazon if you want to get like cheeky or soy chaga and rishi all stuff they only include the fruiting bodies but paul standards believes that you know really the the the, the, all the medicinal properties are contained within the mycelium so because of that like i generally just kind of like you know i really trust paul standards okay so so that that's Uh, yeah i know him from joe rogan yeah Again, I'm not like being like paid to say this. Right. Like, like I've never met Paul Stanis before in my life, but uh, he seems like a good dude. You know, seems like he knows quite a bit about uh, quite a bit about mushrooms. For sure. And I definitely trust his products over you know most of the other products in the market. Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah. But yeah, physical health and uh, and yeah, the mindset thing and just yes, you do need to have the baseline of being a healthy person, take it, eating healthy foods, having healthy things in your body, getting sleep, exercising. But along with that, the mindset of whatever you focus on kind of comes true. And I, and I feel like the same thing with, with a sickness uh, about, if you know, if you think about getting sick and worry about getting sick or think you're going to get sick, you will. I feel like the same thing is true with like positive and negative thoughts. Like if you're yeah. focusing on all the things that could go wrong, I feel like it's more likely that the things are going to go wrong. Yeah, if you had, I mean, I, I still, you know, am a big believer in, um, in uh, you know, James Allen's book, you know. I don't know him. I think it's, uh, it's from, it's from 19, you know, 03. Oh, wow. But, I mean, you know, basically, you know, he, he just says, you know, if you, if you have manly thoughts, you're going to do manly stuff. If you have unmanly thoughts, you're going to do unmanly things. So, you know, don't have those unmanly thoughts, right? And then you'll probably have less unmanly actions. So you know you want to make sure that like your thinking is clear and that and that it's positive because yeah. that influences your actions. And if you think like you know what I'm saying to you right now is like bullshit, then like you basically already lost. Yeah, because you're, because you're already thinking negatively. Exactly. You're already that you can't change your thoughts. You're already thinking that oh you're already screwed and this is the way it is. Like what I'm saying to you is that that's not true. Like you can definitely change your life just by changing your thoughts. Yes. Your thoughts. You can change your action. Right. Yes. Your actions are your life. Right. Yes. So whatever, whatever, you know, Carl Young has this uh, line where he says, you know, um, you're not what you say, you're what you do. Right. So make sure that what you think is going to make you do the things that you want to do. Yes. If you're thinking poorly, you're not going to do anything that, that, that you want to do. You're going to do really poor things. You're going to, and then the next day, you're not going to be proud of yourself. You have a good day when you can look back and reflect and say, damn, I'm, th- I'm, I'm proud of all the, all the stuff. Yeah. That I did. You yeah. know, everything I did today was awesome. Like, like I, I, I was a bad mother effer out there today. You, you know? can say fucker. Yeah, I know. I know I can't on your show. <laughs> I'm not sure if I should say it, but I know I can't on your show. Fucker, you yeah. Know I'm, I'm a bad motherfucker yesterday. It was a great day. Exactly. You know, yeah. that's the feeling that, like, you want to have, right? And you string a few of those days together in a row, and then all of a sudden you have momentum. Dude, and that's... Sudden, you have momentum. Thing, things aren't, like, as, as difficult anymore. Like, you look at someone, you're like, oh, like, things are so easy for him. It's like, no, things aren't so easy for him. It's just that he's got momentum going. Yeah, and, and if bad things happen, you can just, like, bowl it over with that positive attitude. It's like, it's fine. It's that part of the part of the game. Yeah. Bad things happen. Yeah. Oh, that's I've kind of been on that streak the last, like, five, six years, like, and it's like, feels great, man. And, and, and I'm not yeah. some brilliant person. Like, it's just, I just started thinking positively and changing my thoughts and, and understanding this. And yeah. I just think so many people don't do it, and they should. Um, yeah. And uh, about so about the coronavirus, it's funny. Like uh, our president, uh, everyone gets mad at him because he's like, he's saying we're gonna be fine, we're gonna be fine, and like, and I'm kind of like, that's good strategy. We should kind of just not think about it. But uh, like as a doctor, the coronavirus, like it's just a hot topic. So like, 
Any, yeah. any, so uh, yeah, I mean, I'll just share you what, you know, what, what I can, what my, my thoughts on it right now. I mean, yeah. one of us is essentially, you know, it's, it's similar to, to the common cold, but it does seem to be a little bit more deadly. Um, so, you know, the, the common cold carries uh, a, a, a mortality rate of roughly about 1%. You know, the coronavirus, I think, is roughly about 2% right okay. now. Um, Double. You know, yeah, so it's not like crazy. Right. Um, I did see one statistic yesterday stating that the number of cases is is going down um, in China, I believe that was. So, you know, that's that's kind of encouraging. And I would say even if that's not true, like just tell everyone it's true. It's going <laughs> away. It's going away. It's going away. Yeah. Um, and again, you know, the, the, the biggest things that, that you can do are really, you know, it's super, super basic, like wash your hands and make sure that you wash them well. Um, uh, and if you don't do that, up. like anyway, like, yeah, come on exactly. Man. And, yeah. and then, and you, I will say that you should wash them well. It's only about you know 5% of people who wash their hands actually get all, all the germs off, which is a pretty low percentage. You're talking about like one out of 20. Wow. So make sure that you do, you know, wash your hands. And I'm, a, I'm a big hand sanitizer guy. Yeah, like, that works too. Yeah. Like I, sometimes I'll like not wash my hands in the bathroom and just go get hand sanitizer. So is yeah, that okay? That, is that that, good? No, uh, that, that can definitely work too. And and the other thing that you know sometimes I get in trouble for or some people people don't really like that much is I don't really shake hands with my patients. Just okay. because like, you know that's another way where you can you know transfer. I mean that stuff. makes sense. That just makes sense. You know, yeah. to, maybe not shake everyone's hand. Like I think that you know your health matters more than manners, and people <laughs> should should respect that. Yeah. You know? Um, so yeah. you know, that was kind of my uh, advice on it. And if you want yeah. to further on it, I think the best, again, I'm not being paid to say this or anything, I think the very best advice uh, for the coronavirus is, is from examine.com. And I have put that on my, on my Instagram. I saw that recently. So, so uh, yeah, if you want to learn more about that, the best advice and what I would, what I would do and what I'm advising people, just go there and, and read through it. All right. And my very unprofessional advice is just, Think it away. Like, uh, obviously, if you get it, that's a different situation. But, like, I just think the overall attitude that it's going to be fine. It's going away. Like, everyone's going to be okay. Yes, wash your hands. Yes, be careful about that. But, like, it's going to be good. That's my approach. And I hope that works. Yeah. But, of course, I, if I, I, now if I get it, I'm on the record. So that'll be embarrassing. But uh, I, I, like, <laughs> I like your approach. Yeah, I think that's good. Uh, dude, I mean, yeah. Like, I, I, got, I, got, I, got, uh, I got two questions to end up for you. Um, and it's... Okay. And, and then I think that, I gotta go on in a minute or two if that's all right, okay. All right, one question. Where okay. do you see where do you see yourself in 20 years? 20 years. Jeez, I can't predict we're gonna be tomorrow. Uh, uh, you know what? Where do you want I, to, where do you want to I, see yourself? I really do, I really do like um, you know, this this question a lot. But you know, when people ask me where are you gonna see yourself in five years, ten years, it's really hard to answer because I'm what I'm what I'm gonna say is like I'm just gonna adapt to, to whatever happens, yeah. you know, do my best to adapt to to whatever happens. Um, but, you know, I think you know, your your audience might want a little bit more of an answer than that. <laughs> so, you know, in 20 years, you know, I do see medicine changing quite a bit, you know, between now and 20 years time. So, you know, I think that we probably will see more um, you know, psychedelic use for, for mental health patients. Um, you know, I know that you know, we obviously know that cannabis is legal in Canada, you know, not um, you know, federal legal in the States yet, but it's legal in many, uh, in many states. And, you know, I think it will be legal federally soon. Um, psilocybin is legal there. So I think that's going to be like a huge, huge approach there. Um, and then the other thing, you know, I think that, uh, you know, a lot of people are really starting to realize that, you know, lifestyle does make a huge difference to yes. your overall health. Um, so I think that we're going to see, you know, less people using uh, pharmaceuticals and more people using uh, more natural remedies and supplements, you know, even books, you know, mindsets. Things I love like that. that. Really, I love that. Really change their change their health and you know i'm just going to be there every step of the way adapting these new kind of strategies and putting them out uh you know whether it's on socials right. and apps like this or or whatever so you know i'm really excited about the next you know 20 years of health and Hell yeah I'm going to great to answer hey where, where can everyone find you where do you want what do you want them to do Sure. So, you know, I really appreciate it. if you could uh, follow me. So I'm on Instagram, I'm on Facebook, I'm on Twitter, I'm on LinkedIn. Uh, it's Dr. Mike Hart. So D-R-M-I-K-E-H-A-R-T dot. Uh, and that's on, on everything. You know, so all social networks. And then my, my website is MikeHartMD.com. And I did just put out uh, a new website. So, you know, if you want to if you have any questions for me there, just go on the contact page, click on it, send me a question. I'll do my best to get back to you. 
All right, and that'll be all linked up in the podcast and on YouTube and everything. And, uh, yo, this was awesome. I had so much fun talking to you, and this was a great podcast, and I really appreciate you coming on, man. I, I really do. So well, thank you so thank much. Thank you for having me, Sean. I, uh, I really enjoyed, uh, you know, uh, being on here. And, you know, like I said, I really enjoy uh, the work that you do too. So hopefully we can uh, do this again together. Sometime. Peace. Awesome. All right, man. Thank you. Turn it up.